morning boys and girls. Hope you had an awesome week. I hope you remember what we spoke about last week. Can you remember? Nehemiah. So I was so captured by the story of last week. I decided I want to read a little bit more about Nehemiah. Because I know what you know. I know he was a guy. I know he built the wall. But that's pretty much all I knew about Nehemiah. So this week I read about Nehemiah. And something we already know about Nehemiah was he was a cup bearer. Who can remember what is a cup bearer? Can you see? Good. So a cup bearer is the guy that lives in the palace with the king and he tastes everything. He tastes the wine, he tastes the water, he tastes the food, he tastes the pudding, he tastes everything everything the king needs to eat. Why? You know what? In that times, there was a lot of enemies. So enemies would try anything to kill the king. So they had cup bearers. Cup bearers to taste everything, to make sure there's no poisoning in, it's not bad food for the king. So he needed to taste everything to make sure that the king will be safe. So he was also a very trusted man in the kingdom. He wasn't this leader that was the warrior of the, pa the, the, the castle or the palace. He wasn't the governor of the people. He was just the cupbearer. But with his little task he had in the, the palace, it was also very responsible because he couldn't take bribes. They weren't like, hey, Nehemiah, I'll give you a hundred bucks and then we can put poison in the food. No, he was a guy that was so upright. They respected him and they know they could trust Nehemiah. So every day Nehemiah would come to the king, give him his food, give him his drink with a smile on his face. And one day he got to the king and it was so precious to read it because the king could see there was something wrong. It's like, Nehemiah, why do you have a sad face but you're not sick? That's how it says in the Bible. It's so cool. So Nehemiah was like, oh, you know what? My, my city is in ruins. Where I come from, the walls are broken. And Nehemiah, and he was like, Nehemiah, what are you going to do? He's like, I don't know. And he went back and he started to pray. He prayed, Lord, if you want to use me, if I can do anything to repair the walls, if I can do anything to help my people, tell me. And God said, Nehemiah, I want you to go. So he went back to the king and the king was like, well, whatever you need, I will give it to you. I will help you to build the walls. And Nehemiah went. So first thing was, he was a cup bearer. Just a little job inside the palace. Then something that really stood out for me was Nehemiah prayed about everything. Every time Nehemiah needed to do something, he prayed. He prayed when he got to the walls. He didn't just rock up and say, hi guys, I'm here, let's build the wall. No. He was there for three days, didn't tell anybody anything. And he just walked around, he checked out the walls, he saw what was happening, he saw what was, was devastated to a lot of people, there was no wall to protect them. Then he went back and he started to pray and said, Lord, what do we need to do now? So every step he did, when he was building the wall, when they were finishing the wall, when they were in war, because remember there was a lot of people that was trying to fight them while they were building the wall. In that time, Nehemiah prayed. And that is one of the big characteristics of the Bible that if you read about Nehemiah and these characteristics, one of it was he always stood firm, he always prayed. He was a go good motivator for the people. Like, come on guys, let's build this wall. And if you've got a good leader, you know that you are protected. So they were like, okay, Nehemiah, we will help you build the wall. So they were building the wall, but suddenly the enemy comes and is like, ah, oh, with the swords and everything. And they're like, want to fight them and kill them. And it's like, why are you building the wall? So the enemy, like the neighboring countries, was like, no, they can't build the wall because they knew if that wall is built, the people of Jerusalem will be safe. And the enemy didn't want that. So they were starting to, to send out people to actually fight them with swords and spears. And Nehemiah is just like, guys, God is with us. 
So from now, you will fight one hand sword or a shield, and the other hand, you will build the wall. So look at this crazy picture. So this guy is literally building with his one hand the wall. And on the other hand, he knows he needs to protect him because there's evil people wanting to come into his city and destroy his city. And you know what? Nehemiah wasn't scared. Nehemiah wasn't thinking, oh, I'm not good enough. I can't do this. He was like telling the people, guys, you're okay. He was a great leader, comforting people to tell them it's okay. But he was also a great leader to tell people if they were sinning and they were doing wrong. He actually told the guys, listen, you know why your world is broken? Because you didn't trust in God. You didn't believe in God. You didn't pray to God anymore, so God couldn't protect you. So he was very straightforward. Something we struggle sometimes to just be honest with people and tell them what we think. So Nehemiah was this normal guy. The only thing, he was a great architect. Because quickly imagine building a wall. And the Bible says that Nehemiah built the wall in 52 days. Nehemiah doesn't look concerned. Nehemiah actually looked very happy by building this huge wall. In the end of our story, you will see a picture of the whole wall of Jerusalem. And then you'll realize how big a task it was. It wasn't just a wall like around your house like we are used to. It was a massive wall that went long, 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 around and around. It was huge. Nehemiah built it in 52 days. Impossible for man to do it. But with God, he made sure that that wall is built supernaturally. Because why? Because God told him. God chose him to do it. He wasn't an architect. He wasn't this master builder. Can you remember what he was? He was a cup bearer. He tasted food. He knows nothing about building a wall or actually building anything. But because he said, God, if you want to use me, I'm available for you to use me. And today my challenge for you guys is, you don't need to be the headmaster of the school. You don't need to be the head boy. You can't be the headmaster. Yes, sorry guys. You can't be the headmaster. You can't be the head girl or the head girl of the school. You don't need to be the prefect. You don't need to even be the class captain of your class. You can be a normal girl or guy in school doing your thing. Actually, maybe not meaning a lot to the school. But if you tell God, God, if you need my help, I will be available to help. Then that opens the door for you for God to work with you. You don't need to be this big shot. Nehemiah, it's got a whole book in the Bible about Nehemiah. In the Old Testament, you can go check it out. Let me show you how long it is. It's not even a lot of chapters. It's between Ezra, then it's Nehemiah, can you see it? And then it's Esther, Old Testament, a little book called Nehemiah. This guy was nothing, guys, but he's got a whole book in the Bible about his faithfulness to God to trust God, even if everything looked impossible. If someone needs to tell me I need to build a wall, I will really think, no, nah, no, I can't build a wall. But you know what? God chose Nehemiah to build a wall. And Nehemiah said, okay, God, I actually just taste food, you know, but I will build you a wall because you said you will do it for me and you will help me. So this week, when you're walking the streets, when you're playing, ask God in your heart to say, Lord, I am available for you. To use me wherever you need me to go or to do. Let's pray. Close your eyes. Lord, thank you that we can pray this morning that, that you will put our hearts in line with your hearts. Lord, that we will trust like Nehemiah trusted you to say, Lord, I am available. Do with me whatever you want to do. And I will trust you to do it for me. Lord, this morning I pray that even if we feel so insignificant, even if we're so small, we don't really maybe mean a lot to anybody. Lord, that this morning we will say, Lord, here I am. Use me. And Lord, I pray this morning that every child that is praying this prayer, or praying this prayer this morning, Lord, that you will touch their hearts and that you will use them mightily. 
that you will use them supernaturally beyond every person's imagine for that kid to, to do in life, Lord, that you will surpass all those dreams for that kid and that you will show your goodness and your faithfulness through the children that is obedient to you. Lord, protect us this week. Keep us safe. Thank you that you love us and that we will always, always love you back. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, have an awesome week. I will see you next week. Be blessed. Bye.